Hey guys, hey, welcome to another vlog. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> and in this video, I am going to be giving you my super secret, comprehensive, essential puppy list of things that you need when you're bringing your new dog home. Let's jump into this video, right? Oh, oh, oh and. Hello, wait, Bentley, what should they do if they're new here before we jump in? What should they do? They should click that subscribe button and help us save all the damn rescue dogs. And yes, this merch is linked below. Let's jump into this video, right, meow. The number one thing that needs to be high up on your list, and if you know me, you can already guess what I'm gonna say, and that is a healthy, biologically appropriate food and diet for your new puppy. Now, I'm not gonna go into great detail of what I mean by that, because guess what, guys? I have a ton of videos linked right here and down below in both places, all about my opinion on what a great diet for dogs looks like. The short net of it is, is fresh food and raw food for your dogs, complete and balanced. So, all more detail about that below, but that's number one, because puppies grow quickly, new dogs grow fast, and setting them up for success means fueling them appropriately. Next thing is, if you're going to use a crate, then you wanna have a crate. And a lot of people, and what I did, was use a crate and a playpen. A crate for keeping them safe at night so they're secured, and getting a crate that is large enough that they can grow into, but maybe comes with a divider. Uh, so if you have questions on what I'm talking about and crate training tips, then click the videos up here or down below and I go into more detail about that. Um, but a crate is great for when you have to leave them alone or at nighttime. A playpen is an excellent tool for puppies. I rely heavily on them when I'm fostering rescue puppies to keep them contained when you're in the house and you're like within visible sight of the puppy. Maybe you're in the living room and, and they're in the dining room, but the playpen helps in terms of keeping the puppies confined away from danger, but they're also not you know stuck in their crate. Gives them a little bit more room. Another thing you wanna have is a natural flea and tick preventative. Um, one that I like, uh, but there's several out there, is Wonderside. You guys can see this. It's essentially, uh, there you go, essentially essential oils. So I think it's important to have a more natural way to protect your pets against flea and ticks. Again, with most of the th things I'm talking about today, including flea and tick prevention, I have videos in more depth on those. So if you are leaving this video with more questions and you wanna learn more, I got you. I got you. So just. I have playlist list down below, so after this video, go check there. I'm pretty confident I'm gonna answer most of your questions. The next thing are healthy treats. So please, for the love of goodness, for the love of dog, don't go buy treats that are full of fillers, additives, synthetics, starches, sugars, and carbs, which are majority of treats on the market, especially that you'd find at a big box store like a PetSmart or Petco. Go to your independent pet store, the local pet shop down the street from you or in the next neighborhood over. Go in there and find a single protein dehydrated or freeze dried treat. Uh, here's an example I have here. The This is just uh, tripe, it, that's literally all it is. And then I have some beef lung in here. And the reason why this is so beneficial is it's a biologically appropriate treat for dogs. Dogs were never meant to eat those Benny bones that are like full of chemicals or those treats full of glycerin and sugar. It, dogs don't need that. Simple is better. Just like how you and I should eat, right? Like simple, limited ingredients. That's how dogs, especially puppies, should eat. We do not want to start their life off with a diet full of um, sugary, crap for lack of a better term, right? Uh, okay, the next thing is I always, this is this was Finn's, I know, and it's his go bag basically, but this is his diaper bag. Uh, I have another video with everything I have in here linked down below, but I love having a dedicated pack for my puppy so that when we start going out in public, I have one pack that's gonna have all of his essentials, so I like that as well. Toothbrush. 
This is a puppy essential or new dog essential or foster dog essential. Yes, you love your toothbrush. You need to start brushing your dog's teeth and getting them used to it from day one. That is my humble opinion. Uh, even if you're feeding your dog a really healthy diet, this is important because dental health is directly correlated with internal health and heart health. So getting them used to brush Finnegan, stop it, please, please, just let me do the video. Uh, yes, good boy, good boy. But getting them used to brushing their teeth is huge. A treat pouch. So this is so great to have. This is my favorite one on the market, hands down. It's a little, oh my God something on it, but Wildebeest brand, no, this is not sponsored. I've purchased pretty much all these products on my own, but yes, Wildebeest, if you, if you want to send me product, yes, I love everything you guys make, but this is the best treat pouch I've ever seen, and I've gone through a lot. It has a magnetic seal where the treats go. It has a nice front pocket that fits my cell phone or like a poo bag, and I just think they look really good. Love, love, love this treat pouch. When I have puppies, I keep this thing loaded and I wear it around my waist and I use every opportunity that I can to train my puppy and give them positive reinforcement. It's not always through treats, but I do leverage treats. Um, and having this makes it really, really easy. And especially because the next, that leads me into like the next thing that I recommend you have is your puppy essential list. And that is getting a positive reinforcement trainer set up and ready to go. So before you bring puppy home, I want you to go do some research, ask your veterinarian, ask your friends, ask your family, do some research, find a positive reinforcement trainer that you can start developing a relationship with now. So when and it, or if you have issues or questions, you have a resource to look on. And then you can also start once they're ready to go and old enough, you can get them enrolled in some training classes. I think even the most uh, well experienced dog parent out there could benefit from uh, outside source resources in, in terms of training classes. Next thing you wanna have when you get your new puppy is a harness. I love the idea and prefer using harnesses with young puppies uh, to start. If you want to move to a flat collar you know, later down the road, that's fine. But I do love having harnesses to start with a puppy when you're starting leash training for two reasons. One, it works great on not pulling on their neck, especially growing puppies very, very uh, gentle and fragile is the better word here. And so you wanna make sure you're not yanking on that when you're teaching them leash training. The other thing you wanna have is a leash, preferably one that has some uh, part to it that'll uh, clasp around your waist. So what you can do is tether your puppy. When they're really, really tiny, this is tough to do, but as they get a little bit bigger or your new dog, you can put the harness on them, put, clip the leash around your waist and tether them to you as you're doing errands or chores around the house. And that helps them stay near you. So you can work on training, you can work on healing, you can keep them out of trouble, and you can kind of work on that bond between you and dog. So those are a few more things that I recommend. Toys are always important. Um, playing with your dog, I think that is such an underrated I know Finn loves his ball. Uh, that is such an, can, can I just through the ear here? That is such an underrated activity that I don't think we in the industry, I guess, talk about enough is that playing with your dog, whether it be tugging, whether it be running around with your dog, playing hide and go seek, fetch, things like that. Those things are so beneficial for your dog and starting early and teaching them to play early massively important. As you guys have heard me say before, I'm a massive advocate for hand feeding my dogs, especially new puppies when I'm fostering them or when Finn was a puppy. What I mean by that is you take their, their breakfast or their dinner or lunch or whatever, and literally work with them by hand feeding them. So instead of just putting their food in a bowl and giving it to them, I make them work for it. I do sits and downs and stays and rollovers. Uh, I do hide and seek where I'll hide the food and they go find it. I make them work for their food. That is so mentally important for dogs, especially growing puppies. It's a great way to bond and is 
critically important for development. Now, let's say you don't have the time for that, or frankly, you don't want to. One thing I recommend is getting like a Kong-like toy or a slow feeder. Not everybody loves plastic, we're doing the best we can here, but getting like a slow feeder that you can stuff food in and freeze it or, uh, or like a Kong put the food in. If it's kibble, you could add a little bit of raw goat milk in with it for the moisture, freeze it, and then feed it to the puppy that way. What that does is mentally and physically tires out your dog. Or you can do half and half. Let's say you feed your dog twice a day. Maybe you hand feed dinner after work and you work with them on training and obedience. And then, but for breakfast, you fill up a Kong with their kibble, put a little bit of raw goat milk in there, freeze it, and then that's what they get for breakfast. So it takes them a half hour, 45 minutes to get through breakfast. That is a great way to help tire out your dog and keep them entertained. An entertained and tired puppy is a happy puppy. Dog tag. Make sure when you bring home your new dog or your new puppy that you have your dog tag made with their name, your phone number, your address, microchip number, whatever it is. And some people are pro leaving a collar on when you're at home, some people aren't. But if your dog is ever not home, that is at minimum the time your dog should always be wearing a collar with an ID tag. And that's something that we tend to forget in the beginning. Like we think of toys, we think of dog beds, we think of crates, food, but we don't always think about getting a dog tag. You need to get one right away. Put it on the dog's collar do that day one because in the unlikely and unfortunate event that your dog gets out you want to make sure they have proper identification so that's huge a couple other things to make sure that's on your puppy essential list is one finding an integrative and or holistic veterinarian I have a link down below of uh, really highly referred ones that you guys can look into and explore in your area but what you don't want to do what you do not want to do is get a new puppy and then, or a new dog, and then five months or six months or two weeks later, something happens. The dog gets injured, the dog gets sick. What you don't wanna do is at that moment, then go find a new veterinarian because at that point you're gonna be stressed, you're gonna potentially spend more, you're gonna make decisions that you're gonna later question because you're gonna be making decisions under a frantic time. Do not wait for your dog to get sick or ill or injured to find a veterinarian. Find a veterinarian today that you have a good relationship with, that you trust, and that you feel comfortable with. Do you guys know I'm an advocate for veterinarians that take more of a natural approach? So definitely start looking for one today. And a segue, another kind of add on to that is start thinking ahead. Do you guys go away every Christmas? Do you guys travel every Thanksgiving to your in-laws? Because if that's the case, you need to start looking today for a pet sitter. I have an incredible pet sitter who has bailed me out of very tr tricky situations multiple times. Her name is Cynthia by Pet Care by Cynthia. She'll be linked down below as well. Um, obviously she's only here in like Austin, Texas area, but you need to find someone, whether it's a trusted family, friend, uh, highly reputable, highly trusted and trustworthy pet sitter that's certified, you need to have that set up now because something could come up. What if you get your new puppy and two weeks in, your grandmother falls ill? You know, knock on wood. That is not something I expect to happen, but if something were like that to happen, you don't wanna to have to be trying to call some stranger to quickly come and take care of your dog if you need to leave because in that, in that short amount of time, you will not have time to vet out the trustworthiness and the capability of that person or that business. So please start finding and looking for a pet sitter now, someone who could help you in the case of emergencies. Even if you think you won't need them, get that set up. Now, another thing on your puppy essential list, and I talk about that in my other dog myth videos that I have linked right here, or my other videos on the first few things to do in the first few weeks of having your dog, again, linked right here and all that down below. But make sure that on your list is you taking time off of work or school or whatever obligations you have so that you can be home with your new dog and or your new puppy or new foster dog for at least the first week if possible, if not first long weekend. Because the worst thing, not the worst thing, the 
not ideal thing that you do is that you get a new puppy and then the next day you have to go to work for eight hours. That's not setting you or your new dog up for success. So do the very best that you can to make sure that you or someone in your immediate family living with that dog is home with the dog all day for the first week or so to get everybody adjusted. If you have any other tips of things that you recommend for people that you did that I haven't mentioned, with your new puppy, link or comment those down below. That's, this is a community. Like I wanna learn from you, you guys learn from me, we learn from each other. Comment below some other tips that you guys have. And if you have any questions, comment those down below as well. Or you can find me on Instagram, pretty active there. Uh, my Instagram name is at Rachel Fasaro, very easy. Or on Facebook, at Fasaro's Fosters. And uh, let, let me do my bark remark of the day. This is the comment of the day. Uh, comment of the day goes to charstar555, who says, oh my God, hi, I love you. <laughs> Can you guys see that? <laughs> That's just adorable. Uh, I love you too, seriously. I love all of you. I am so grateful for you. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video as well, my shirt, save all the damn dogs. All the proceeds and profits go to Pause for Change, which is a Rodney Habib Foundation dedicated to pet health and nutrition. That is linked down below. And I hope that you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.